everybody, I hope, oh, are we recording? Oh yeah, we are. <laughs> okay, so basically today, guys, I wanted to do a very calm, chatty video with a cup of tea. Um, I actually have green tea in this beautiful mug that my friend gave me that says, hello sunshine, and it's really happy and positive, and it makes me happy having a drink out of it. But anyway, that's another story. So basically, grab a cuppa or something to relax with, maybe a snack, and today we're just going to have a very chatty, I say, calm video that I'm going to talk about things I wish I knew from the beginning when I started making art or selling art. So basically things that I would tell myself like three years ago, four years ago. A lot of this is my personal opinion and view and things I've gone through. So yeah, basically the point of this video was if there's anyone out there, which I'm sure there is, who is trying to sell their art and just has got a direction of where they think they want to go, but just need a little bit more encouragement, then this is for you. I've made a little list so I don't babble too much. Um, and my first point is not to undersell. So when I first started, I definitely undersold my work, but then again, I'd only just started and the quality of my work, you know, it probably wasn't great. So it's up to you to decide how much your work is going to be sold for. There is no magic formula to work out how much you should sell a painting for. Nobody can tell you what to sell a painting for, that is up to you to come to that decision. However, I will make the point that it is good to start at a price that you will be happy with for the next few years. So for instance, if you want this to be a real business and earn money from it, then you've got to realise what you need to live off and sort of have goals at how many you need to sell. Um, and things like that. I mean, you're not going to hit those goals straight away, it's going to take a while, but it's good to have a plan and that way you can make sure that everything you're selling is for the right price for you. And um, why that's so important is if you start off really desperate just to sell something, so you sell it very cheap and then your art career starts taking off, then it's going to be weird to suddenly increase paintings or have a massive increase. It's going to look a little bit weird. So it's best just to start off what you would be happy with. Okay, so another point is really, really important this one, don't paint to sell. This is so tricky because especially when you start selling pieces of work, you get in the sort of, you get in the motivation to carry on painting and this is where you can easily lose your way with it because when you don't think anyone's looking, anyone's watching, then you are truly yourself. You are truly making art that you want to make. But however, when you start sharing that with the world on social media or friends and family or people in the area, gallery owners, anything like that, people, other people's opinions can really rub off on you. And it's really, really hard to basically just ignore 90% of what people say because Everybody will have their opinion about something. It's like food, you know, carrot and coriander soup, for example. Not everybody likes it. I don't like it, but some people really do like it. It doesn't mean there's anything wrong with carrot and coriander soup. It doesn't mean it should be banned from all shops just because not everybody likes it. I hope that makes sense. So if someone doesn't like your art, if you feel like you are making the art that you want to make, then just stick with it and that'll be it. What I really dislike seeing is art that's clearly been made to sell. So like I don't know, oh, I don't know. I can't really I can't really say what I think is that because I might not be right and that might just be my perception of it. But you know just sort of the general things that look like they've been made in bulk to sell a lot, you know. So make sure you're painting because you love to paint first of all, and make sure you're painting what you want to paint, not what has sold already or what got the most likes on Instagram, because that way if you are always doing what you want to do, you are staying ahead of the game, you are staying ahead of what's current. You have the position to make something completely new to the world, so copying other things or making things that are already popular, it's great, but you're never gonna 
get on that bandwagon that you want to get on because you've got to create something new, something exciting, something fresh and you're only going to do that by painting things that you love. Oh, my brain literally hurts already. <laughs> oh, time for a sip of tea. I hope this isn't coming across ranty. I just wanted a, a little chatty one, you know? Okay, so my next point is not to spend too much on art supplies. So when I first started, I literally had, I'm not even joking you, this is for real. I had a little tin piggy bank, it was Hello Kitty, just in case you wondered, and I would literally drop 20p in it. And like, this is where I started, oh this keeps falling down. This is literally how I started. I had my little money bank that was a little tin and I would drop 20p's, 50p's, pound coins, basically anything under a fiver I would drop in and just let that build up and then I would go to the art supplies shop and I'm not gonna lie like the first few months of me making art the paint it wasn't good paint it really really wasn't good paint and in fact I think what I'm gonna do I'm actually gonna go and buy some of that paint again and recreate like some paintings or something just to notice the difference of the paint and how much how bad it really was but anyway my point was is that you don't need like the best artist supplies to create art and to start your journey as an artist in fact I think it's actually better to start off with cheaper supplies because you're not scared of using them you know I'm not rich I couldn't afford the best artist supplies so when I could afford something, and when I say when I could afford something, it was literally like still student grade. But when I could buy that, I found that I was really reluctant to use it. So I would only paint with that paint once I'd had like the most amazing idea. I was like relying on that piece to be perfect because I was using my favorite paint that was more expensive. And then it wouldn't go right and then I'd be really discouraged and then I'd give up and I'd think I don't want to waste any more paint. I don't, I'd, I'd rather not paint than waste it. And you get in this mind frame where you're wasting things and it's like, but you bought it to paint, you know, you bought it to express your creativity. And that's what it's supposed to be used for. So I definitely, definitely think, unless you can easily afford certain types of paint, just stick with what you are comfortable with buying. And there is no shame in that whatsoever. And some of my best art was made with really cheap art supplies. It doesn't really matter because it's the idea that is important. Another thing I really want to encourage you guys is to find your own path. Try not to compare yourself to other people and I know that is like the hardest thing. I do it all the time. I feel like, oh yeah, I've sold a painting and I'm feeling really happy that day. And then I will look at someone else's page or whatever and realise they're selling that every day or every hour. Or <laughs> and it's, e it's so, so easy to feel discouraged because you're comparing yourself to other people. And it's so not healthy for the creative environment. It's like the worst thing. I actually heard on a TED talk, I can't remember the exact words, but it was something, it was about how to motivate somebody. And I just remember, it was a lady, she said, if anyone recognises this, by the way, please pop in the comments which TED talk it was, because it was really good. But it was something like, you can never motivate someone with negativity. And I realised that I was being so negative to myself Every every hour I would tell myself something negative, I would bring myself down, I would say you're rubbish compared to that person, you're nobody compared to that person, what you do doesn't matter, I would say this all the time. And it wasn't until I started having more self-belief that I was happier, so so much happier in what I was making and the journey and if I made something I wasn't confident in, it didn't matter because I would just say okay start again, paint over it. And normally, or before, I would have abandoned it and I would have felt negative about it for so long afterwards. And now I just go, okay, no, it's cool, paint over it. Because the more time you spend worrying or feeling down about it, 
you could be painting and creating amazing things. So tr try and tell yourself positive things and then that will sort of spur on your creativity and it'll help you get on that roll. You know sometimes when you do one you're like, oh I want to do another and I want to do another. It will help you get on that roll and that is the dream. Everybody has felt jealous at some time and it's not necessarily a horrible jealousy, it's sort of a pining after jealousy and it's just part of human nature. Everybody has it and everybody does it but it's really important to try not to as much as possible. And I've got written down here just on my notes to be inspired by the success of others, not jealous. So if you see somebody doing well and think I could be just as successful or I could I could do that but in your own way, on your own path, on your own journey, but you could have you could feel like that. This one is really important and I think will make the biggest difference and that is learning about marketing. So there's so many different tools online and different blog posts or different YouTube videos even. Um, I might even do one myself in the future but I don't know, maybe one day. And that is all about marketing and how to market online, how to use social media, how to use email newsletters. Um, I talk about this kind of thing a lot anyway, but it's just because it's so important and it will it will make the difference to your whole art career. I hate calling it career because it's like, ugh, but there we go, that's kind of what it is. Yeah, so I mean, in a nutshell, I would say to make use of email newsletters, I use MailChimp and it is amazing, um, blog posts. I mean, I am really bad at doing blog posts because I just found blogging very like two-dimensional, which is why I went into YouTube because I feel like you can put across a lot more of how you feel about things and it just feels a lot more personal than a blog. But if you aren't comfortable with YouTube and things like that, then blog posts are amazing. And just little things like making your Instagram page look like um like businessy or like having sort of a theme for your instagram and things like hashtags also just um like a minuscule point please don't ever buy likes or views or followers it's all a scam and it's not worth it so the last point is about criticism like, I think accepting criticism comes differently with each personality more than anything. Some people do not care at all and will happily take on board anything and are very trouble free with it. Other people, um, like myself, take things to heart very, very easily and so like the criticism can be even put in a positive way but you'll go, oh no, that means, oh no, and oh oh, I didn't want it to be like, oh, well, I wanted it to be perfect. And literally that is like my mind frame. It just spirals down. And I think what it is, is that I give myself so much criticism all the time. And like I was saying earlier, a lot of it is negative, which shouldn't be. But I think what it is, I'm just quite negative to myself sometimes. And then when other people say things as well, it's like, okay, I can't, I haven't got enough strength. <laughs> That sounds so silly, but I hope that some of you know what I mean. Um, so I think that's, again, on the confidence thing and self-belief. But it is really important to try and accept criticism in a positive way. Um, some people are just nasty and just trolls online and just ignore them. They're just... That doesn't even bother me anymore. Like, it used to bother me. And now I've realised that there are two types of criticism. One is just pointless and that's trolls. There are people that want to see you succeed and the critiques of those people are the ones that you want to listen to. And listening to doesn't mean instantly do everything they tell you. So people have said to me in the past, oh like do that and do that and 
and they are coming from a different perspective so they might say um for example people might say oh paint i don't know pet portraits and um, pet portraits do really really well you'll get loads more commissions and they're coming from the perspective that money is like the most important thing in that scenario I don't really like painting pet portraits. I don't mind for pets I actually know, like, and have a connection with. So, like, friends' pets or my pets or... Because you know their personality and they feel like a real person to you. But when it's, like, strangers' pets, I don't really enjoy painting them. So people that may give you criticism or helpful ideas, some you have to listen to, others listen to and forget. Have you finished your copy yet? Mine's nearly done. So I think that's all the advice I have for today. I hope that it's been valuable to some of you out there and it's probably things you all knew already but it's good just to have little reminders. I need reminders all the time. I think all of us get wrapped up in our own little creative minds where we just can't see past a certain painting or and it's good just to step back, open it up and just reevaluate things and there we go. I hope you have a wonderful, wonderful day. I wish you all the best on your art journey. Thank you so, so much for your amazing support. Every comment you leave and every like you give my videos, it all makes me feel so much more happy um, that I'm doing this and I just wanna thank you so, so much. So have a wonderful, wonderful day and I'll see you later, bye.